Everything we know about the planet Mars today suggests it's a dry, dusty world where the record of liquid water is long gone. Here on Earth, we can see landscapes that remind us of the Mars of today we've come to know. These landscapes in Iceland give us a window into the possibilities of the Mars of the past. Here on Earth, the water planet, we can see the evidence of water in the rocks, in the landscape, everywhere around us. As we probe the secrets of the long lost Mars, what was the Mars past like? We can see that here on Earth in juxtaposition. The possibilities of the Mars of today with the possibilities of the Mars of yesterday, just a few hundred yards apart. In fact, we're asking these very questions with our Mars exploration rovers. How can we read the record in the rocks and the landscapes, see evidence of the warm, wet Mars of the past? We ask ourselves, what can we learn from Mars about where our own planet is going? What will be the history of water on Earth in the future? And likewise, what was the history of water on Mars? I'm Dr. Jim Garvin, NASA's chief scientist for Mars exploration and a geologist by training. One of the ways we seek answers to these poignant questions is by acting like geologists, both on Mars with our rovers, but also here on Earth. We read the record, the forensic record of the history of water in the rocks. And we're gonna do that here on Earth to help us understand Mars just as we're going to do it on Mars to gain vision into where Earth is going. around me the smell of sulfur is in the air. I'm standing in this remarkable place here in Iceland where the manifestation of volcanism is at every scale, grand and small. In fact, if I kneel down here, I can feel water that's too hot for me to touch from within the ground. So we have volcanoes here on Earth at every scale, down to these little fumaroles. But why are the volcanoes on Mars, Mars different than those on Earth? The gigantic lava shield known as Olympus Mons, as big as a third of the United States. Well, how did it get so big? Why isn't it active today? Well, let me try to explain. First, Olympus Mons is so big that if it were to occur on Earth today, it would have broken apart into pieces, like the big volcanoes in Hawaii, even those here in Iceland. The Earth's crust is so dynamic, its plates ever moving. On Mars, we don't think that horizontal motion occurs today. It may never have occurred. Secondly, Mars is a smaller planet than Earth. It was born with less internal energy. And while it's going through its life, that is Mars, trying to get rid of all that energy, just like these little volcanoes, it didn't have as much. So it didn't have as much energy to produce volcanoes as long. So here on Earth, volcanism, it's omnipresent under the ocean, here in Iceland, wherever. But on Mars, that record may have cut off, may have stopped. And yet, we're still searching for a part of the Martian record that may be preserved. A fossil record of volcanoes like this that haven't erupted in millions of years, perhaps. It's still an important question to ask because it's this kind of environment here on Earth and on Mars where we know there are all the ingredients that makes life possible. In fact, we're looking for the record of them, possibly in the form of rocks, in the minerals and the incrustations on its surface. It may be that it's those kind of features we'll be able to find on Mars using machines like our Mars Exploration Rovers. And they tell us of the environments that we seek in the Martian past. So here on Earth, I'm experiencing volcanoes firsthand, and we're looking for the record of these kind of volcanoes on the planet Mars. <laughs> 